Welcome back to Autopsy of a Horror Movie. I'm Brucker, and today I am joined by Orlean of the podcast Spooky and Strange. Hello, Orlean. How are you doing? Hey, I'm great. Thanks for having me. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm really excited to talk about the movie Host today. Uh, this was kind of a, a big movie for the year, for the year 2020, where not too many movies came out, but this was a big one. Thank you so much again for coming on. Um, you've been on my other show, my older show, Film on the Rocks. You've been on there a couple of times, mm-hmm. but you're going to be the first guest on Autopsy of a Horror Movie, so you have that a uh, little mile marker for, for this show. <laughs> That's such a compliment. Thank you. I... I do really love getting philosophical about horror. Yes, same. And <laughs> outside of this, we've talked about how much fun it is when when genres like to blend themselves in stories and everything. And I'm kind of interested when we get into what kind of like subgenre this fits into. But mm. before we go any further, your podcast is Spooky and Strange. And that's what it's called. I'm not describing it. That's what, <laughs> what it is. Yeah, I, I figured it actually works as a title and a description if you're right. looking for stories that are strange spooky weird and you like to read that's basically the audience so you don't have to have read the books you don't have to know anything about horror or the genre you can just jump in listen to me recap a story and then do a little analysis on it yes very fun and your podcast can pretty much be found everywhere that you listen to podcasts and be sure spooky and strange with an ampersand so be sure to yeah find it that way that's right we're (laughs) like it's like a detective agency but it has nothing to do with that (laughs) (laughs) well thank you so much for coming on today today we are discussing the movie host from the year 2020 this movie was directed by rob savage written by jed shepherd this movie stars hallie bishop Gemma moore emma louise webb Radina Drandova, and Caroline Ward. This movie was released straight to Shudder on July 30th, 2020, and I'm about to get into a short plot summary. After the plot summary, there's going to be lots of spoilers for the rest of the episode, so if you don't want to be spoiled, pause, watch the movie. It's available on Shudder, and come back and listen to it. But you have been warned. Let's get into the plot summary. During the COVID-19 pandemic of 2020, a group of friends take turns hosting weekly online Zoom calls, with activities mostly being games or quizzes. This week, it's Haley's turn to host, and she decides to do an online seance with the help of the medium Salan. After disrespecting the spirits, things start to go bump in the night as an evil spirit jumps between locations and causes great harm for our cast stuck in quarantine. So I feel like that's the best way I could sum it up without really going into too much detail. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, that was pretty succinct. That's exactly what happens. A Zoom seance. It seems like a great idea, of course. (laughs) Oh, yes, absolutely. And I love seeing how Rob Savage uh, came up with this idea. He said that this started out as a prank. He, before the pandemic hit, he moved into a new apartment Mm -hmm. and he would Zoom with his friends occasionally and... He was paranoid that somebody was living in his attic, like a squatter or something. Oh, that's happened in real life. Yes, that is. That is. I think that's more terrifying than finding out <laughs> yeah. your apartment's haunted. Um, haunted by humans as opposed to haunted by ghosts, way scarier by humans. Anyways, he was convinced that somebody was living in his attic because he would hear footsteps occasionally. And he would investigate it, of course, find nothing. But he was telling his friends about this. And so as a joke... He had he staged it to where he took his friends up to the attic with him over Zoom, and he faked that like he got attacked by someone. Oh my and god! His friends thought it was real, of and like, they, like yeah, right. <laughs> and so like, they called the police and everything. He's like, no, 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 no. This is just a joke. And he he of course recorded all this and he uh, released it on Twitter and it went viral. And uh, I for, I don't know who, but he said somebody got in touch with him, saying like hey, do you think that you could, like, make this a bigger scale? Like, do you think you could stretch this out to a feature-length movie? And so he called up his friend, uh, Jed Shepard, who is the writer of this, and they have, they've they been friends, have written, uh, they've collaborated together on projects, and they got to brainstorming and writing this. They pitched it to Shudder. Shudder liked it, and in 12 weeks, they got the movie made and out to Shudder. 12 weeks? They did this in 12 weeks. He said, and I'm getting all my information from a YouTube channel called What Culture Horror. It's um, just this YouTube channel that he did an interview with, which 
I'll probably include a link to it in the show notes if you want to watch that 30-minute interview. But yeah, he 12 weeks, and he said two days before it was released to Shutter, he was still editing and fixing it up. Oh my so gosh. This was a very quick and rapid process for this movie. Wow. I I think what is amazing and one of the things I liked about it though is using Zoom, that's possible. You, you mean like using it for like a movie? Like that's possible? Yeah, to like that's such a good use of a technology that everyone is touching right now. Yes, it's. <laughs> I'm glad you said that because like before the pandemic, I had never heard of Zoom. Like I always <laughs> used like Google Meeting, Skype, FaceTime, those things. And then as soon as everybody was stuck in their houses, it was like Z- all those things were obsolete and Zoom was the only <laughs> thing. So I kind of just love that this movie just took advantage of that and used that because it was, I guess, like the natural uh, evolution in mm-hmm. this subgenre because this movie is very similar to Unfriended, which came out in 2014, which used Skype. Mm-hmm. Which makes sense because I feel like a lot of people in 2014. Right, that was huge. High, yeah, high schoolers. Yeah, we're using Skype, and now this is just kind of like the next thing. Um, I also kind of find it funny that because a lot of people are working from home, so a lot of uh, you know group think things or like you know group work is being, taking place over Zoom. If you think about it, Salen, the medium, this is just her doing her job from home now. So she's <laughs> <laughs> so of course it takes place over Zoom. That's exactly right, and. I am one of those people, although I have to be honest, I worked from home before the pandemic because I work in technology and um, I've worked as a designer. And for example, they don't care where you live when you work as a designer, you send in your files, you have your Zoom meetings. Um, So I was kind of amazed when the whole world learned about remote work and all of these video tools (laughs) because I've lived on these things for years. And oh, okay. to me, that makes this movie much scarier. Oh, because it was like something already part of your reality. Right. This is what I do every day. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie came out in July of, you know, of the pandemic, July 2020. And I just remember seeing so much buzz about this movie, like on Twitter. Yeah, it was, it was everywhere. Kinda, yeah, it was just kind of everywhere. And um, it was actually, I got, because while being stuck at home, while I'm like working on manuscripts or making figures or whatever, some of it is like kind of mindless. And I was like, I'll just like have like the TV on in the background. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? This might be a good time to like just try out Shutter. And because uh, I had like a promo code from another podcast. And so I tried it. And it was like shortly after I started my free trial, host came out and all the buzz. I was like, oh, I guess I'll watch it one night. And it, it it shook me it really scared me the first time i watched it it was i was like damn i i get the hype because i thought it was just baloney really i was like "Uh, yeah probably isn't that good it sounds silly the plot when you're describing it to someone you're like okay so that one's gonna go straight to video you know (laughs) (laughs) do you think that if if this had a normal theatrical release it would be it would have the success that it has right now not at all and it's totally to your point that Before this, everyone wasn't doing this regularly. People weren't as familiar with it. They weren't, there's something different when you take a technology that you're almost obligated to use and twist it. It, It's like the whole premise of Black Mirror. All these things that are necessary parts of our lives, if you take that technology and like you make it a little darker, a little more manipulative, a little mysterious, Mm -hmm. it's so much scarier. We can't avoid it, you know? (laughs) Yeah, definitely. I was I was trying to think, you know, I just find it so interesting that they went because obviously for obvious, you know, real world reasons, it had to go straight to streaming. But I was I was thinking, you know, you know, let's pretend the pandemic didn't happen. And, you know, you could easily write a reason for them to be video chatting instead of, of being in person. And I was wondering, you know, what I feel like that this would turn into that movie that was just kind of like a hidden gem. Mm-hmm. Probably wouldn't be like a box office success but everyone that saw it would go oh my god that was scary but yeah. it wouldn't have the buzz that it has right now because it's like on it's on like everybody's top 10 list for like uh best horror films of 2020 and I on many that. on many it's at the top it's so, everywhere i yeah i don't even watch that many horror movies i don't have a shutter subscription i you know i occasionally see them and i was aware of this movie <laughs> <laughs> Because it's just, it, it was like in our consciousness and 
you know, it's similar to something like Bridgerton. When we're all at home and sharing experiences and we have time, it's almost like we come back to these like cultural moments in media. And I just, it's also kind of like, cause it was viral online and this is a movie that takes place online. Yes, exactly. So it's kind of like, like it's, it's staying perfect. in that medium. <laughs> and it's, it was like impossible to have like a word of mouth for this movie. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's just, that's like the new word of mouth, right? I don't know. Seeing, seeing your friend retweet something. Yes, you know? absolutely. Seeing the poster everywhere. I love that they added those quotes to the poster where it's like, you won't sleep for weeks. That's <laughs> such good PR for a horror movie. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like you know, what they said for like like Blair Witch Project, which is kind of like in the same vein yes. as this movie. Yeah. I was actually thinking about that. If we can segue a little bit. Mm-hmm. I was thinking about Blair Witch so much while watching this movie. And I'm so curious about the different generational reactions to this movie, because when Blair Witch came out, I was 12. So like fully aware of it. I, I, it was rated R, so I don't understand how I knew so much about it. I just think that because I was on the early internet of the time, like it, it was that version of viral. People on the internet were like, what is this? They Mm -hmm. had a website, they had campaigns, they were dropping videos. You know, yeah. it was it was so mysterious. And I even remember thinking, is this really real? <laughs> and like, it's it's kind of the same vibe with this movie. I feel like if I were 12 and watching this, I'd be like, holy shit, is this real? Right. Yeah, because <laughs> it did, did a lot of the same things that Blair Witch did. It The actors kept their real names. Mm-hmm. Um, this it was actually filmed in their apartments. Uh, like, oh, like, wow. Yeah, it was really cool seeing how they did this. Um, yeah, well, so the story I told about how he did that prank, it was with these actors. Uh, they were already oh, friends with the director. Okay. We mean they are actors. And so he pitched them to come back on to do it. And they said, yes, of course. Um, <laughs> and so I like that because you know, we're actually in their homes. So it just kind of adds that like sense of realism to it as well. They had to get like really clever though with a lot of like the action sequences and like some like the stunt people. Mm-hmm. And uh, Shep, no, I'm sorry, not Shepard. Uh, Rob Savage was able to find basically a group of stunt men and women that were quarantining together so i was like all right perfect like y'all could just do this and this movie was like really good at editing and how it did the cuts one of my favorite things is that while one person is speaking we're looking at the screens of the other people so you're kind of just like seeing even if it's like something boring it's like very much like yeah like this is kind of like monotony now like kind of like how we all get bored in like work meetings now on here or whatever Mm -hmm. but um they said that they would get really clever with the cuts. So um, I believe it's that scene with Emma and she's in the kitchen and like all the cabinets open. And she's like mm, yeah. putting like flour on the floor and like the footsteps are coming. So we don't see, it's like Emma's POV. We just see like her slippers for this. They like transition. They did like a clever cut. And this is actually the kitchen of the director. And he's wearing slippers doing this. Stunt. Oh, I was wondering because I think the editing is really good. The, the way that they... They edited it to switch between POVs. It feels like it's naturally switching. You know, Mm -hmm. it doesn't feel manipulated. Mm -mm. And I like that. Yes. And it's very easy for you to keep track of whose house you're watching because everybody Mm -hmm. has name tags on the screen. It's like, oh, God, this is just it just solves that problem right there for you. Well, that and the rooms are so distinctive. Mm -hmm. I loved that, that. One thing I do in work meetings is I'm constantly looking at people's backgrounds to see like, oh, what books do they have? What are they? What's their art <laughs> like? And so in this movie, I found myself doing that because everyone just had such different settings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's a good point. Yeah, they kind of be, their setting became like their character. That was like really. Yeah, easy they to... were all really distinctive. Mm-hmm. What subgenre of horror would you say that this fits into? I think this is possession, even if none of them necessarily get possessed, because I, to me, this called to mind Ouija board stories, um, anything like that, where teens get together and like piss off some demons, maybe like it just felt Mm -hmm. in that same kind of vein, even though no one is directly possessed by a demon, you know? Yeah, I was it's so i obviously th- you know this definitely fits into like the paranormal mm-hmm. subgenre like kind of haunting i see i was struggling with possession cuz like no nobody like gets possessed per se but right. like, i don't know if that i don't know if that's a qualifier for that subgenre 
And so another thing I'm struggling with is, is this found footage technically? Mm. I I like that it's presented as if it is. Like when they're all gone, the meeting closes and ends. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like we're watching a Zoom recording of the meeting. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yes, I, I do like that. I mean, the, the director calls it a found footage movie. But I feel like that... I feel like that we need to maybe come up with a new class for movies like this and unfriended Mm -hmm. because I don't know, to me, it felt more like watching something in real time, like how you would a normal movie. Cause like Blair, Witch, it's very much presented as like, Hey, this is like a cursed VHS we found. (laughs) Oh, this is what, and to me, I'm like, we're, we're kind of like, it was like, we're watching it in real time. Like you would a normal movie It's just taking place in a screen or a zoom uh, window. Okay, I get what you're saying, which is the linear nature of it Mm -hmm. changes it maybe from found footage. And I kind of agree with that because in found footage movies, you're frequently unsure exactly when or where you are. You're just kind of getting thrown things and you're like, wait, is that after? Do they know each other? You know, like you're Mm -hmm. constantly trying to piece it together. I guess found footage movies tend to feel more like a puzzle than this one. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah. and so... So I, I I don't know like what to call this is like just because it does feel like it's happening in real time. It's just like a it's just a, it's just altering the POV. So I don't know what to. Like. I mean, haunting also kind of works, but a movie like this, I honestly hate to categorize this way because I almost feel like that gives it away. Okay, oh, you mean like just calling it a haunting movie? Yeah, and okay. is it even a haunting movie? You know, I think. Obviously, you have to put something in the shutter category field, mm-hmm. but I think this is one of those where it's murky. It touches yeah. a lot of genres. Yeah, it definitely does. I think because in it even like at times kind of feels like a slasher kind of like like a little bit um, like they're being stalked, almost like a almost like a final destination too. Oh, where, yes, like, which I don't even know what to classify that. <laughs> I don't know, but it's it's like something is coming for them. And I I don't know what that is. It's just this like a dark force, you know? <laughs> That's the subgenre. There's just like a nefarious dark force. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think what I would propose, obviously off the top of my head, not really thinking about this, I think a subgenre could be called horror stream. Oh, okay. Because I think that could encompass a lot of different things that we're seeing now. And it's mm-hmm. not quite found footage. It's it's a linear, almost stream of consciousness video. That's what's happening. Okay. As opposed to something that is either found footage or, um, you know, very specifically possession, very specifically... Uh, demons i feel like horror stream could even be um what is that subreddit (laughs) uh like no sleep yeah something like that like if you put that in Uh, movie it would be like horror stream to me oh yeah no i i agree i like that horror stream i like that and it could could fit into other things that are outside of like paranormal Mm -hmm, um because definitely because i think an unfriended the sequel dark web or whatever i think that one is like an actual human that's the the antagonist is not a ghost okay like like in the first one so that like still but we're still seeing everything through the pov just like a skype screen yeah i feel like there's something interesting about adding the stream idea to it because of the time that we're in and i feel like we're going to see more movies that are like stream videos yeah um, or like put us in that point of view Yes, which I'm not against, but like I hope it's like I hope it's written more cleverly to like, oh, we're stuck in lockdown. Like, can you give us something else? <laughs> like, <laughs> like you're in different countries, but you're you know keeping in touch with friends, whatever. Like something really simple like that. I <laughs> I, I think there are definitely a lot of options. Yeah, I I think there's a lot to go there. But one thing I did think about while watching this movie, um, kind of similar to what we were just saying, is it possession? Is it not? At one point, Salem says, it's called possess, but that doesn't have to be a negative thing. What the fuck? Like, that is when I leave a seance. That is a (laughs) bad thing. I don't want possession. (laughs) 
It's kind of like hearing your uh, your pilot go. It's okay. We had some turbulence like on the way down or something like it's that. Like, like, we just lost a wing, but that doesn't have to be a negative thing. <laughs> Crashing counts as landing, yeah. So <laughs> that's and that was so early in the movie that I was like, "Whoa, someone should have flagged that when she said that." Yeah, so, yeah. I felt like some. I wish I can't remember. They oh, there been awesome. There was like a little like private side chat, like little like texting going like, "Um, what?" <laughs> that's what this movie was missing because there is like a Zoom chat that sometimes mm-hmm. people use. That's what we needed. To see. It been, just to see them just uh just throw gifts back and forth at each other. Yes. Like the one of the WTF. guys. Like, yeah. <laughs> yes. That's the only thing that would have made this better. Um Yeah. <laughs> but I I I thought it was interesting that like the first fifteen minutes of the movie, it's just this like unsureness and we're not even sure what's going on. The characters are not seemingly sure what's going on. It's all this like feelings of inexperience. Like Gemma doesn't know how to do the sound and oh, uh, yeah. you know, like Haley's nervous and there's just all this like nervous energy in the first 15 minutes. And mm-hmm. then I'd say after that mark, you start to get paranoid. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Like f- for me, it like picked up really when, um, when uh, uh, Haley, her her, uh, her her sitting in her chair gets like drawn back. That's when. Oh I my went, gosh, that's such a okay, good effect. It was, and that was like the first domino of the movie because there's a lot of times in this movie where Haley's walking around with her laptop facing outward. Especially, Who does that? Especially Who in the first five that? minutes. I had no one no does idea. that. I that was that was one flag for me where I was like, no one walks that way. <laughs> yeah and especially like so we see like she's like investigating like bumps and noises in her apartment in the first few minutes i, I don't know i was kind of what's what's going on here but uh yeah it made me suspicious actually because i was like one no one carries their laptop like that and then mm-hmm. when the other girls started walking around they weren't carrying their laptops like that and i started wondering is this all a prank by Haley? we all knew Gemma was gonna do some bullshit right like Mm-hmm. I think it's it's brilliant how quickly they were able to establish her character where by the time she was pranking everyone, I was like, ugh, you know, because I <laughs> knew she was going to do it because she's that kind of annoying character. And they were mm-hmm. able to to tell us that right away mm-hmm. in a way that like I was like, OK, that's the first fake out. We're done with that one, <laughs> you know. And then I was like, wait, what if Gemma is always like this? And what if this is Haley playing a giant prank? <laughs> on Gemma uh, <laughs> <laughs> kind of like you know like uh, getting a little taste of your own medicine sort of yes like what I, I was thinking like what if that's the dynamic in this group of friends where they're all like fucking Gemma always does this so we're gonna show her oh my goodness and like Salen's like someone's aunt yes like- <laughs> because Haley was the one coordinating it and she was the one who was like so serious that in the beginning I was like is she being too serious like is this clearly you know and I thought maybe that would be like, they'd all get scared, but then Haley would be like, yeah, Gemma. <laughs> <laughs> See, I I have an interpretation for Haley's character. Well, kind of, kind of. Okay. Which I'm going to say for a little bit later. But okay. <laughs> while we're talking about characters, I want to kind of talk about what, um, just kind of like what I think they kind of like represent, like this group Ooh, of people. Oh, okay. So I re- just, I thought it was super clever that, you know, just how we're introduced to everybody or how everybody is treating everything. It was really great because we got to see how everybody approached quarantine differently. Like we saw, like the the we saw the person. I think Caroline. She went back home to live with her parents during lockdown, and some people were just stuck by themselves, like Gemma and Haley. Mm-hmm. And then we got to see like the two couples that moved in way too early together <laughs> to do quarantine together, which I think we so funny. I, yeah, it's it's very labeled because I knew somebody. I had several friends for all of those categories. <laughs> And so I was, it just made it that that much more relatable. And we got to mm-hmm. see all their own like issues. Like uh, yeah. with Dina, she's like, you know, her and her boyfriend obviously having some tiffs, and people, her friends, like they definitely moved in way too early. Like, <laughs> that was so funny. <laughs> yeah, and I don't, I really like that. It was kind of showing how everybody's everybody's different approach to yeah. quarantine, which just made it that much more relatable. Yeah, I agree. I also, I really liked the actress playing Caroline because I felt her fear like right away she was so Mm -hmm. good at communicating that and also getting us to empathize with her really quickly where i was Mm -hmm. like i hope nothing bad happens to her 
Right, yeah. Okay, I found myself oddly rooting for Caroline, too. Yes, because I think, like, she wasn't being weird about it. She was just very honestly, vulnerably scared, you know? Mm -hmm. And you could totally feel for someone like that. (laughs) I think think they kind of wrote that in, too, because... Uh, the director said that they did some practice seances like as a team before mm-hmm. just to do it and they said like stuff actually happened oh no <laughs> and for caroline she she's the one that got like the most activity from their practice seance that like a book like in her room just fell off a shelf during mm-hmm. it and she was like she like went into hysterics oh, and, like God. panicking and stuff and so uh, so i'm pretty sure as a director he's like yes use it but uh <laughs> So, but yeah, and I think, I wonder if we also feel for her too, because I think that she was the character that moved home with her parents. So yes. we actually saw her dad and we all, we all immediately went, oh, he's like one of like the people that's most susceptible to COVID. Mm, so like, you know, yeah. good, good on you. You're really staying, you're, you're doing the right thing here. Yeah. So, in contrast, as soon as Teddy says he broke quarantine, I was like, Horror movie rules, you're gonna die. <laughs> yes, yes, it's, it's, that's like a new rule to break. It's, it's like saying, I'll be right back. I broke quarantine. I was wondering, I was like, in this movie, are the rule breakers gonna get in trouble? Like, mm-hmm. is this a rules thing? Um, because I think, regardless of genre or subgenre, there's always a set of rules that, like, you, mm-hmm. you associate with a type of movie. Yes, and for this one, paranormal, you never disrespect the spirits. And that's that's true, you take it seriously. You don't break the rules. And then they're all drinking. And I was like, is that going to be a problem for the spirits too? Because sometimes in horror movies, you get judged harshly. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. That's awesome. Uh, that was one of my top notes. And then also I had this random note. I don't know where in the discussion this falls, but I thought it was an amazing moment when Haley pulls out the Polaroid and you've got like portals on portals on portals and there's like doors behind them and there's the laptop camera and there's the polaroid camera and it's just like what have you done (laughs) (laughs) that's so yeah that was uh to me i like had like i had like the dumbest thought ever when (laughs) when she's doing the portal because you know it made like that that sound a camera makes with the flash bulb and I, I just thought of like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. For a I was like, was that was that a nod? I was like, no, Brucker, it's just a camera. She just took a picture. No. But <laughs> I I definitely thought that it one it was interesting that everyone had at least one door directly behind them. Oh yeah. Everyone, even Teddy, he comes inside door right behind him. It was fascinating. Same with Salem, even. So like I kept watching things like that where I was like there's portals all around them is that where the danger comes from interesting how each of them has like a separate doorway that they have to close because i think that's what yeah someone explains yes interesting i I never thought about that for i wonder how he said the director said that they did do like virtual tours everyone's home Mm. to like so like caroline's attic she like showed in the attic okay yeah we're definitely gonna write that okay um so yeah okay that seems like a very purposeful framing then interesting i I agree i thought something about doors was really important and it's not that surprising because even if we take this back to like there's no technology in these stories it's all about portals and opening doors and letting things in Mm -hmm. and so it felt like there are so many places and ways you're letting things in potentially in this movie yeah oh absolutely <laughs> and to me it, all, it almost feels like something built in for the audience to just be like get up and run out the door you know like, oh it, that's true because you're like why are you sitting here what yeah, are you like, doing <laughs> yeah get out <laughs> i definitely had that thought jumping ahead to the end when emma's under the blanket i was like what the fuck you saw something walking towards you and you're just hiding under a blanket in the same house that's crazy <laughs> my, my my girlfriend said that this movie just proves that if you just hide under a blanket you're safe <laughs> yeah what was that that made no sense at all <laughs> get out of the house that is and she also... still keeps the laptop with her though oh my like... god i would have abandoned the... i like i know they had to do it for the movie but i would have abandoned a laptop so long ago a phone maybe i would have kept with me but a laptop i'm not carrying around this bulky thing when i'm running for my life up and down stairs <laughs> so while we're still talking about characters i have an unanswerable question for you or maybe it's answerable did <laughs> Salen die no i think you d- no 
You don't think so? Okay. I mean, I'm torn, but I don't think that she was the target of whatever they did. And I may be mm. wrong there. It's just, especially because we got the fake out with her too, the first one where it's like, it's a delivery person. <laughs> Which was very fun and quaint for, for this movie. <laughs> yes. Like, there were a lot of fake outs. And so, I don't know. I guess I didn't really understand the body count in this movie. Like, mm. why some people just got, like, hit in the head <laughs> and some people are dead. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, uh, it was it was this would be like a very interesting one to do like a kill grade on which are types of episodes i cover as we're recording this i haven't released anything yet so <laughs> orlean's coming in super blind to this but yeah, yeah. maybe those the, will come out <laughs> yeah uh, <laughs> yeah i would be interested to go back and maybe do a kill grade for this and see what i determine to be actual deaths in this especially for our last two characters oh something else going back to the characters and where they all were Teddy wasn't there when they started the seance. So why was his portal open? Because he joined in, I think. I think I think one of the rules of the movie that we're supposed to, I don't know, um, deduce is that if you just kind of join in on this Zoom call, you're now part of it. Oh, so it's like we've started the seance. If you walk in, you're a part of it now. Yeah. The ghosts are here. <laughs> yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like that's it. Like if you... Cause the portal or whatever hasn't been cut off from any of the other people. So he's mm. now expanding the circle. Okay. At least that's what I presume are the rules of this movie. Okay. Yeah. It, it's unclear what the rules are. And I kind of like that because mm -hmm. it, horror movies don't have to spell out the rules. It's almost more fun figuring out like, is there any logic to why they died? <laughs> yeah. And I, I think like the exposition that we get from Salen is like perfect enough. Yeah, I agree. And especially because it's a group of, I mean, random young people who have hired a medium probably on like TikTok or something. Who the fuck knows how much research has gone into this? Oh, I, I have some thoughts on that I'm going to save <laughs> for, for like our last segment of okay, this episode. But, yeah. I mean, like these aren't professors. These aren't experts in anything. <laughs> like they're just trying to do a Zoom seance. So why would we even think that Salen is good at this or like knows what she's doing? <laughs> yeah, like last week they did top 10 facts of Gemma and now they're doing right. a seance. <laughs> <laughs> like this is just inexperience. And yeah. so uh, it makes sense that things go wrong. I feel like that's set up perfectly. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so I want to kind of move on to the fear analysis segment of this. So I always love how horror movies, they all seem to tap into something different that is like a fear of something. And according to Dr. Carl Albrecht, there are five types of fears that we all share, which are extinction, mutilation, loss of autonomy, separation, and humiliation. I kind of like to use this as like a baseline, and then we'll kind of like branch off that if you have anything else. But Okay. I guess at the core of this, um, what, what do you think that this movie, like, what types of fears is playing off of? I definitely think loss of autonomy. And I, I think that just comes in at the beginning because we're all feeling that. Like that's the context mm -hmm. of the movie mm. is we're all trapped in these rooms and we're trying to make the best of it and we're trying to connect with each other, but we feel really far apart. Um, so that's already happening. And then, of course, when you add the darkness to it, extinction, because... Mm -hmm. I, I mean, such a fundamental fear, but also when you do something stupid and it's potentially dangerous, I feel like that feeling gets ramped up even more. Like, you've brought about your extinction, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely feel like that this absolute... Most horror movies definitely play off the fear of death or extinction. Mm -hmm. And I feel... I was struck Not struggling, but yeah, I was definitely getting some, like, loss of autonomy because I feel like whenever you bring in that darkness that you said um, that's making you do things that you, mm -hmm. you're you not wanting your body to do. Um, definitely loss of autonomy. I also feel like just since it's over a Zoom that and they're all stuck in quarantine, that there's this like sense of separation. Absolutely. Like mm -hmm. they, it's, it's shown so well when there's video lag. It's so real. And I, I feel like we've all had that moment where someone is talking, you're trying to pay attention, and the video starts to lag, and you're like, oh, shit. 
oh shit what's happening <laughs> you know you're trying to fill in the gaps and yes because you don't want to be like wait stop because you're gonna be like wait stop yeah <laughs> <laughs> so like it was just the realism i think really ties into that loss of autonomy because then it's like oh my god this is this is me <laughs> this is me sitting at my computer <laughs> right some some of the points that uh, you said oh, we kind of mentioned about how you know like uh emma runs underneath the blankets with her lap still holding her phone <laughs> yeah. or laptop and people are just like running around with their devices and i feel like that's because they have this fear of separation because oh. they don't want to leave the zoom call because even though that's what is causing their torment they're they're in it together and mm. if they close that, then they're really on their own. So I feel like that's playing that fear of being super separated is why they're not just hanging up or leaving their devices. Because Gemma, when she leaves her apartment towards the end of the movie, she even leaves with her phone or device. And <laughs> at least that makes sense. If you're leaving, take your phone. <laughs> okay yeah but she didn't right. like hang up the call you right know, she... that's true i'd probably hang up the zoom put it in my pocket and like run you know yeah. but i i also wonder i have a couple thoughts one again is this a generational yeah. thing i for example i love leaving my phone in a bedroom on vacation it's like a treat and i don't know if that's what younger people feel about their phones i think it's something more essential to them and their lives you know and the way they communicate with friends I feel like that the the younger group now, if they were to go on vacation, they want their phone so we can take pictures and everywhere. Post it. Whereas yeah. I am like, oh my god, I don't have to look at a laptop, a phone, anything. I don't have to call into anything. <laughs> like I can just be like in the world, disconnected. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that is that's also and that has to be generational because I grew up disconnected for mm. a time, and so to me that's like a pleasure to be able to return to that state. But of course, that's also the basis of every horror movie before we had the internet. Right. <laughs> because you are truly alone. When you disconnect from this stuff, you feel so alone. And yeah. even though there's probably people around you, you could walk to someone else, it's a, it's a different feeling now than it used to be. Oh, absolutely. It's so different. And this movie is like really kind of just really emphasizing on just that feeling of loneliness too just because of the situation and yeah I, so yeah that's what was kind of was getting it's like just this extra fear of separation because yeah. like they're filming like the uh, i think it was emma or caroline was filming just the, the footsteps walking towards her oh my and god like, what the how, fuck how did you not just run around and <laughs> drop just, your like, phone scream run like what is going throw on? it at I it i would <laughs> at least be like this like there's no way i'd be able to just hold it perfectly stabilized um, yeah that was this whole movie <laughs> this whole movie is just like the thesis of the subreddit praise the cameraman this whole... yeah the study shots were solid when in real life yeah. like your phone would just be it would just be blur you couldn't tell what's going on <laughs> oh, can we please talk about how or just like acknowledge like damn they put a filter on the face of a demon in this movie <laughs> okay that was so scary it that was, is, was like, that it, was so scary. Doesn't it sound like a stupid thing? Like he it was put a filter so on dumb. the ghost. But the way they did it, I mean, it's so it's so key. It goes back to monster movies. Like the way you design it is so key to it being scary, and not silly. And it, like the line is so almost invisible between scary and silly. Mm -hmm. It's very yeah. hard to hit scary without making someone laugh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, they, they definitely had to pick, like, the right face filter because it was just, like, a blank thing. It was, like, the puppy dog thing or, like, like the tongue stick out. Yeah. I almost feel like I would kind of jump at, like, more, like, the mouth emotes because then that means its mouth is moving. Oh, God. And, it's yeah. like, <laughs> and, like, I don't, like, I don't know if my brain would comprehend that. Like, for some people, it's scary. And for some people, they think, oh, that's stupid. Yeah, that's true. I thought it, w it was just really well executed. The part I didn't understand is... There's clearly like a corporeal being standing in your room and you just slowly approach it and like throw a towel at it. Get out. <gasps> oh, that was, I forgot about, that was good. Get that out. Really good. What are you doing? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of the reactions. And I mean, on the one hand, I can criticize it because I know I'm watching a horror movie. They don't know they're in a horror movie. So like you would behave as rationally as possible for as long as you can, you mm -hmm. know? 
you're not going to jump to like it's a it's a corporeal demon standing in my room <laughs> you're like oh okay well at least i know that you're here you don't know what it is you don't know are there more of them are they like Ooh, in the house point. why do we think there's house? one right like why do we think there's only one being Mm-hmm. it uh, seems like there were more yeah yeah that's a good point it's it it definitely is possible well, like, are, are the beings the ones that were, like, pulling their chair back? You know, like, you have to wonder, what was this thing? And I like it that it leaves that in. Like, we don't even get a name for it. Oh, yeah. I love that. I didn't want any of it explained. Don't try to yeah. explain this. It's just weird and crazy and shit happens. I love that. Yeah, it feels it's... so much more, I hate to say realistic, but it is. Sometimes weird shit happens and we just don't know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, I like I like it a lot. Yeah, I love that it wasn't explained because I don't even know what to call the antagonist in this. I guess maybe Jack. But... but we don't even know what it was. And for a while, I was like, is this a mass hallucination? Until mm. things started happening in their houses, I was like, are they just like egging each other on? And, you know, it's like building and you're alone in your apartment and you start mm -hmm. to see things. Um, it was always possible. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I never really went into, like, is it is this real sort of thing? But I definitely thought for, like, the first 20 minutes they were just scaring themselves. Yeah, it, it seemed like that. And it's it's very believable. Especially, again, you're already alone. Mm -hmm. You're sitting with your back to all the doors in your house. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like nighttime. You know, there's a lot of uh, elements here that already make it scary. This movie relies heavily on jump scares, which normally I'll kind of knock a movie for, but it was pretty well done here. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm not like giving, I'm not knocking it for that. Like, this is that type of movie. It's just, it's just jump scares primarily with these super occasional, super subtle thing happening that if you blink, you maybe missed it. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, the best scare was when Caroline's head is being bashed into the oh camera. Oh my god, that was truly horrifying. That was horrifying because one we talked about earlier, she's probably the character we're most sympathetic with mm -hmm. and rooting for. So it was just really sad, and they set it up so well because her background was just that loop. Oh my of god, her doing that laundry. video that she had made and looped. Oh, like when so they what, introduced that, I had no idea it would turn so dark. <laughs> yeah, and so like whenever she disappears, it just goes back to that loop, which is just so unsettling because now it's kind of like this loop is her ghost mm -hmm. just her stuck in this moment and the, the other thing that like really scared me about it was that because normally like when i watch like ghost movies i haven't I albeit i haven't watched a whole lot of paranormal movies but most of the time it's just like creeping things like having like objects being moved or maybe an object's being thrown but you're not being physically beaten up by the spirit or whatever and this, like, she's bloody, and it was just scary because I was went, oh, my God, this thing can't actually physically harm them. And I, I don't know. It, it, it went, it kind of just, like, shattered glass for me. I was like, whoa, <laughs> this is something really, really scary. Yeah, that scene definitely ratcheted it up for me when I was like, oh, they're going to start dying. This yeah. is very like horribly yes like that scene i almost couldn't believe it where i was like where did that come from mm -hmm. it's like it, unlike anything we had seen so far and you're just like holy shit that's graphic and unsettling yeah. mm -hmm. it's uh and just combined with her loop uh, it was just, that, that was that was my favorite scare of the movie my second favorite which uh i had these two kind of like tied but like, i guess like 1a 1b was and this one was a super subtle one. I, I wonder. I wonder if you caught it. Okay. Because um, my girlfriend missed it the first time she watched it with me. So, you know how we go up into Caroline's attic and she scans over and she there sees the legs hanging, mm -hmm. which was very one. Yes. How did like they all went? Wait, what was that? I was kind of like, oh come on. But you uh, saw it. Yeah, yeah, you saw there were legs. <laughs> Anyways, like you've seen legs before. Um, later on, like a few minutes later, ten minutes later. They think that it's over, and now we're in Radina's apartment, and you see the legs behind her as she's just walking. I don't know if you saw this. I don't but... think I saw that. Okay, I'll have to find a screenshot of it because, oh my god! So they think it's over because there's a point in the movie where they think that they've closed 
right. the loop or whatever. And the what's on the on what's on the screen is you see everybody's screen. But if you pay attention to Radina's as she's walking, there's legs hanging behind her, oh. and nobody sees it. And I went, oh, God no! Like it's <laughs> it's not over. Like that's there. And uh it and again it's so subtle. It wasn't like a jump scare mm-hmm. or anything. Like nobody else saw it. It was like blink and you miss it. And yeah. that terrified me because I was like, I'm the only one that saw that. <laughs> Like, do something. It was. I have to send you a screenshot of it. It was. It was very disturbing. Yeah, I think. I think the scariest and most effective for me was the first time Haley's chair goes back. This is great. It's It's like the first time that there's something real happening. Mm Mm-hmm. Like something is is with her. It's in her apartment. It's great, and because they were all arguing and yelling at each other, yeah. and it was like this thing saying like "I'm here too," kind of thing. But that's also what twigged me to like, Haley, are you trying to get everybody? Because I, <laughs> I was just thinking like, I felt like no one was taking Haley seriously, mm-hmm. and that that was very clear on her face, and then the way she talked to them, and. I just wondered, like, is this a thing for her? Like, does she struggle to get her friends to take her seriously? And uh. you could imagine, again, a group of young people trapped in quarantine coming up with some, like, elaborate prank that goes horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, the chair flying back, because it can't be faked. You're all sitting there watching it. You see her just sitting there. You know there's no one else in the room. Yeah. It's That's so great. sudden. I love, see, this is, I think, a testament to how effective this movie is because the scariest thing to you is just a chair moving. I know. It's crazy. At the end of the day, that's what it is. It's nothing particularly violent. There's no blood. Mm -mm. It's not a fight. It's just a very strange thing happening. And another thing to this movie's credit is that normally music is a big player in like just creating atmosphere and everything. There's no music or score to this movie. It just opens and it's just that's why it feels so real like this is literally our lives we don't get a soundtrack there's no zoom music you know that i loved it Mm -hmm. i was instantly i there was no suspension of disbelief for any of the setup and Mm. that was nice it's not like why did you get a free house that you're going to move into the tonnet you know there was none of the (laughs) i have to buy into the setup here yeah (laughs) it was just instantly like i'm in okay i know where we are I didn't I didn't have a lot of particular scenes that stood out and I I mean that's part mm-hmm. of what you're saying is there's a lot of subtle things that happen throughout. Yeah, and I just feel like the whole third act of this movie just shit hits the fan. Oh my uh, god, it really ramps up. Yeah, especially and I think like another point for me that just really escalated just like fuck like this thing means business is when Radina's boyfriend just drops from the ceiling. Oh my god, cuz the whole time I was like where did he go? Did he leave? And I was like scanning her background occasionally to be like, is he just walking around somewhere? <laughs> yeah. Because it... it was suspicious that he was just gone. Yeah, it was. And I was like, how are they going to like do that? Because I was wondering, because now, now I'm like worried about like Caroline's dad. Too. Right. What happened to these people? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's also very real because, you know, you're on a Zoom. Someone walks by in the background. Someone's like, oh, yeah, that's my whatever. You never see them again. Walked out of, walked off screen, presumably off planet. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, I know we're not quite to the message yet, but that's kind of uh, where I'll oh. be heading. Oh, if I'm, I'm cool to get there now if you want to. So I have an idea of a message and then I also have an idea of a giant metaphor for this movie. So I think message at, at a very high level, it's you just don't know what's going on in other people's houses which is a persistent theme in horror. It's one of our favorite horror themes, really, Mm. which is like, you think you see in there, but you don't. You don't know what's happening. Oh, interesting. And even here, when you have a direct camera into their home, you still don't know what the fuck is happening necessarily. And you don't know what happens when they go behind that door or when they turn this camera off. When we get off this Zoom call, like. I don't know where you walk in your apartment. I don't know what you do next. Like, there's just, we get these snippets of people's lives and we think we're watching their life, you know? Mm. I, I like that. Like, that kind of like this message of you don't know we go, even though we're in their house. 
we're right. just getting like this very small corner you still of only have room. a narrow view like you are seeing what i have okayed you seeing you know oh yeah it's kind of like <laughs> presenting what and like caroline too like her background she makes it like that that false background yeah yeah that's what i mean like there's there's a lot at play around like we keep thinking that we're seeing like what is true or real but we can never really be sure mm, i like that i i don't have as much as a message just because i felt like well i guess maybe that this kind of plays into more like the fear thing but like this movie also kind of plays into being in over your head mm, that's and, true like, because Haley, she is, this also goes into my interpretation, but Haley is, it's her turn to pick the activity. <laughs> and so she's kind of the unsaid leader of this. So when shit hits the fan, they kind of all look to her like, what the hell do we do? She's like, I don't know. This, this never happened before. <laughs> and so my interpretation is that Haley says that she's done seances before with Salen. And that like, this is like a thing that she's been into, but just hasn't brought her group of friends into it. Mm-hmm. And we see that there's like kind of maybe some spiritual activity going on in Haley's apartment before they even get things going. So my interpretation is that Haley has had a spirit following her for some time now because she's been doing these seances. Mm -hmm. And Gemma just gave it a vessel to, oh, to enter. Interesting. So it was like a combination of Haley bringing something in, not knowing it, oh. and then Gemma kind of like activating it. That's interesting because that's also a very classic horror trope is, you know, you don't know what you're bringing with you into a seance or a situation. Yeah, because it, it kind of like goes into like what you said. You don't know what these people are doing. Like, we don't know the types of seances Haley's really been oh, doing. Like, that's has true, she been, too. <laughs> has she been doing like other ritual like things that were oh. more intense than this, which is why she has this very evil thing following her. But for some reason, she's kind of able to tame it until Gemma ignites it that's interesting yeah. yeah and it could also explain why Haley seems to take it so much more seriously than the others even from the beginning she's like guys pay attention like be respectful like, i wonder if she's seen this go bad before oh that's a fascinating theory what if this isn't the first zoom call that's gone awry yeah like this isn't her first <laughs> this isn't her first rodeo with the jack <laughs> or whatever this isn't her first zoom seance <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's the new that's what we say now in pandemic this isn't my first Zoom seance. A seance? Yeah. That's oh, what... that's what they call them on TikTok, I think. Oh, I think that's what some people are going to call stupid, but yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if I were going to put out a PSA, in the 90s, it was um, don't open portals via Ouija boards, but now it's don't open portals via the internet. You know? Mm. Same advice. I love how the evolution of found footage which I'm going to say Blair Witch, I mean, Hannibal Holocaust came before it, but Blair Witch being like the first big one, mm -hmm. the message you take from that is don't go out into the woods. And this <laughs> one's like, don't be in your apartment. Like, <laughs> But that's like, the message of horror. Like you're never it, safe. Yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> that's one of the scariest things about horror. But also what I feel like we're drawn to is that this stuff can happen to anyone anywhere and you don't know when it's going to happen to you. And you don't even know what will happen. There are a billion horror movies. Anything out of those movies could happen to you. Yeah, it's kind of like <laughs> that uh, that fine balance. Like in Blair Witch, the Island of the Wilderness, the furthest you could be, be away from technology, you're not safe. And in this, you're, this is like the closest right. you could be to technology. <laughs> That's because it doesn't matter technology or not. Like horror is everywhere. And mm -hmm. bad things can happen to you anywhere, no matter what you're doing. And that is, tr I know that's so terrifying, but like, that's the message. That's my life philosophy. <laughs> um, but it's, it's true. That and should be the name of your autobiography. <laughs> bad things can happen to you at any time, anywhere. <laughs> Put that on a headstone. That's actually uh, been my unofficial life philosophy forever. Some people call it pessimism, but it's not. <laughs> it's just, I'm, I'm a, a horror fan. I'm a horror fan. Yeah, there you go. Um, but I also have a very serious theme to potentially tie this to. Oh, please. Or metaphor to tie my theme to. And it's timely. Something else that has been happening during quarantine and during the pandemic, at least in the U.S., is an increase in domestic violence. Mm. And uh, 
another reason I thought of this, there was an advice letter a couple weeks ago to Dear Prudence, who writes for Slate, and it was a coworker saying, I think that I saw my coworker get harassed by her husband, but it was so fast and she denied it. And now I'm not even sure if I saw it. And that made me think of this movie so much. Oh my goodness. Because it was like, it it makes you question your reality in the same way where you're like, did I see what I thought I saw? Did I make that up? Interesting. Like, is my mind just filling in the gaps with horrible things? Yeah. Isn't that, it's such a, it's such a fascinating, like, it's not even gaslighting. It's just the like we were talking about because you don't really know what's going on and you get these snippets of Mm -hmm. things and it's the same with domestic violence um you know over zoom what happened in the letter is the husband didn't know the wife was on the call he opens the door and like starts screaming at her in full view of the zoom call oh wow but then sees it closes the door and leaves so (laughs) it's one of those where of course like the coworker tries to go back to normal and the other woman is like, what did I, did that, is that real? And that's so much like a horror movie. Like it's just this circle of like life and horror movies. Oh, that's horrible. And the, the realism of this one. And I, I will say, I especially thought about it during the Caroline violence scene, the way that she is being, um, or the way that she, it's almost like someone is behind her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so much of it felt, or like pulling someone out of a chair violently. Like these felt like domestic abuse things as well. Yanking someone, you know, like these sharp, sudden movements of anger. Throwing like kitchen objects across the room. Absolutely. Like throwing shit around. It just, it felt very, it felt very much in the same way, even though there's nothing in this movie that says domestic abuse at all directly. I just mm-hmm. feel like if you think about being trapped in your house, being trapped with a quote unquote malevolent spirit, um, being like in be constant anything. danger and being unsure of the danger. Is it mm-hmm. gone? Is it coming back? Are we safe? Oh. Um, it's it. The director may not have thought about this at all. I have no idea. But it, it felt so clear to me as this is another way to look at what it's like to be trapped in your home. There are so many things that can happen and it could be a spirit. It could be your husband. Like there are just so m- there's a lot to this to mine. I feel like. I think that's a very nice. Well, I don't want to say nice. That's <laughs> yeah. a very good metaphor and, and kind of like analysis of that. Cause that's something I didn't think about was just how substitute this invisible spirit with something concrete. And mm-hmm. it's does a it partner, change? Um, you know, it, yeah. it almost hinted at that when, like, the couples were having little tiffs, you know? Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Or, like, Teddy's girlfriend comes over and physically closes the laptop and takes him away. Like, there's a oh, lot of those yeah. movements where, like, someone is exerting control over your movements. And it might be a spirit. <laughs> we don't know. But if you looked at it and you put a, a person in there, you'd be like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it turns into, like, a different kind of movie. But the non, nothing has to change in the scenes that we see, mm-hmm. you know? And yeah. I think that's so interesting. Yeah, it, it just turns into something that's embodied. Yeah. Um, so I feel like kind of like you and I talked about recently, this movie is so grounded in reality, but there's this touch of supernatural where you're like, maybe, Yeah. maybe. <laughs> Like it's very, it's like ninety percent realistic, and then it peppers in this like, maybe, <laughs> you know. But it doesn't really go full supernatural at any point. Uh, I think it, I would argue that it does with um, mostly the the jump scares that like you actually see, mm, the, like the one at the end. Yeah, there's like three at the end. Like I think Teddy sees it twice, and then mm-hmm. one at the end. Yeah. Yeah, I will say the one at the end is the one that worked least for me. With the camera? With, like, it zooming right into the camera at the end. Because, and I'm so curious if this is a universal thing, because I saw the 60-second alert in the corner start to count down. And I don't know if that's because I use this for work, and so I'm hyper aware of those (laughs) things. But as soon as it counted down, I was, like, stealing myself. Like, from 30 down, I was like there's going to be a jump scare. 
something is gonna like come at the camera <laughs> i would so that's so so alfred i think it was alfred hitchcock or maybe it was william castle but uh one of the the, the og horror directors that was kind of like one of their gimmicks in mm-hmm. the movies is that they would because i think it was hitchcock that said this is that it audio it's it's a lot easier to scare audience like if you tell audience there's a bad guy around the corner mm. they're now anticipating that yeah but like the 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 anxiety is building up That's and true. he would he would put like a clock he would literally put, have like a literal clock down be like this is mm-hmm. going to happen and to me i was to it, it worked on me like i, I jumped. okay <laughs> and because i saw that happening and i was like oh my god something's going to happen but i don't know what it is something's, right. something's coming but i don't know what it is and like oh where is it? and you know that it, it got me it, it was effective on me okay I mean, I think part of it, it's so interesting that you went into this in such a different way. Like, just, this is just a movie and we're going to see what we're going to see. And the whole time I was like, is it a prank? Is it a trick? Is it real? (laughs) Oh, no, I was just, I got hooked and I was just watching. And so I watched this twice. The first, uh, with two very different experiences. I'm kind of curious how you watched it. The first time I watched it, my my girlfriend was busy and so she couldn't watch it with me and she was just working so i was in bed just sitting next to her watching on my laptop with headphones <laughs> and i would i would say it was very effective that way just because it felt more real because yeah it's like I, you're in the call <laughs> it was exactly and of course you know the headphones add to it everything and i'm like jumping and like ah, ah, like the whole time and when i watched it on my tv it, it was i mean i I knew all the scares. I wasn't a few jump scares got me, but not as much. And my girlfriend did jump a couple of times, but I feel like I feel like there's like an added uh, uh, element if you watch it on a laptop with headphones. I was curious how how did you watch this? Just on I TV? watched it on a laptop. Um, oh really? Yeah. Okay. And I I liked it on a laptop because it did kind of feel. Yeah, I set it up on like the arm of my couch. You know, I had my drink. It was like I was getting on a Zoom call. <laughs> Oh, um, okay. I had all my stuff ready. It was plugged in and I had my notebook. It was just like logging on to work. Like that's what I did. Um, but I think that's helpful. Like you're yes. in the mode. I think that's another reason why this wouldn't be as super successful in a theater. Yeah. Just because you, you automatically lose that element of yeah, it. Yeah, totally. You're you're sitting in a space that's like foreign to you. You're maybe uncomfortable. It's a giant screen. You know, like it's a very different experience. I guess we'll kind of just get into some like closing thoughts. Um, I'm going to leave you with two questions. Um, how well do you think this movie will age? Like 10 years from now, how do you think we'll look back at it? Will it still be watchable? And of course, I'm going to steal a question from my old show. Do you want a sequel? I don't want a sequel. I rarely want sequels to horror mm-hmm. movies. I feel I I want parallel stories in the same universe. Okay. You know, I don't I don't need it to be a sequel. I don't need characters to be aware of the characters before them. I don't need to build on the same kind of story. You know, like mm-hmm. I don't ever need to see these people again to get the vibe and get into it with another group of characters in a different setting. Yeah, I get that. I think there's a lot here to explore and not just because Zoom is one of many video conferencing technologies. I think the idea of having people Uh, like virtually connecting and things going wrong and the confusion and unsureness i think there's a lot they can do with that i agree i don't want a sequel i I do well not like a direct sequel Mm -hmm. i do kind of want just take this wrapping this framework and kind of like just do something a little bit different yeah um i would love to see like a group watch feature be added into this oh that's interesting because I think it would be really fun if they were to get super meta with it. Because let's, <laughs> let's face it, it's going to go to Shudder. So I have mm-hmm. it to where there's a group watch feature for a Shudder movie that audiences oh can God. actually go watch. And it's like a cursed streaming movie. It's kind of like <laughs> The Ring meets this movie. That's I, fun. I'm, I'm into I that. Would, I would like to see that. I'm glad I pitched that to my girlfriend. She goes, that's stupid. Just watch The Ring. So... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, but it's the same thing. I imagine if I had heard this pitch, I would have been like, I watch Zoom meetings all fucking day. Why do I want to watch a bunch of people in a Zoom meeting being scared? You know, like the, the pitch isn't what sounds exciting. Yeah. It's how they can do it. Sounds too silly. It sounds very silly. It sounds boring, quite frankly, if you were to describe like, 
and then weird things happen in their backgrounds. Oh my god, like I don't want to watch a Zoom meeting for fun, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Um, so I feel like that's part of it. Like you have to really nail the execution Mm -hmm. so that this isn't just like I'm logging on to work literally. Yeah. I don't want to see people just talk about their dumb days. That's all of our days. (laughs) (laughs) Um, as to how it will age, I don't know. It's so unpredictable how horror ages to be honest. It's, I can't tell what people are going to love or hate and why in horror. And maybe that even changes as we age, like as our perception of the movies we saw ages. Mm-hmm. Because in 10 years, I don't know what my reaction to this movie might be. Yeah, because I'm wondering how dated it's going to be. Like, what's, are we going to look back at this 10 years from now? And be like, oh, I remember Zoom. We don't use that anymore. Or See, I uh, don't know. I think, have you seen Chronicle, the found footage movie? Y- I've seen parts of it, yeah. Oh, you, you need to watch it. It's incredible. I would say best found footage movie and it's like horror ish, but I don't mind or it doesn't take me out when I see people carrying around uh, like video cameras Mm -hmm. in movies. I'm not like, oh, wow, remember that? It's just like, yep, that's a way to capture media. So I almost wonder if that's the way this will age too, or it's like, yep, that's a thing we all did for a while. I also wonder how much the like this takes place during the reality of 2020 like how much people because i wonder if people be like oh i don't want to like go back into that but it's like but after like the first like 15 minutes they kind of drop that and you Mm -hmm. it's it's just now a movie except towards the end when Gemma and Haley bump elbows after everything they've been through that was so funny that did take me out of it for a second because i was like why are they doing that yeah (laughs) because yeah i forgot we're in a pandemic too in the movie i don't think it's necessary framing at all but i do think i don't think it will seem retro because like i said i've been working this way for years more people are going to work this way in the future even when we're not in a pandemic like so it's going to age pretty well college kids work this way think of how often even like high schoolers are hopping on video calls like this way of communicating is more like i think inset with the current generation than ours and so that's why i think it will age more naturally for them oh yeah of course we've always had video calls you know (laughs) i don't think it'll seem as retro as like i used to buy cds in a mall gotcha yeah (laughs) it's it it won't be like the equivalent of somebody watching like uh, halloween or texas chainsaw and going why don't they they just call for help like (laughs) yes because i think like as technology changes video calls aren't going to go away the idea that we'll get to like 3d calls in the next 10 years or something is insane so like we're gonna have video calls for a while and people increasingly communicate this way because people move there i mean you have immigrant families you have like people all over the world so this is just a way of life i i don't think it'll age poorly for a couple decades yeah okay yeah i th- i could definitely get on board with that I, I feel like that this will be a definite time capsule oh yeah this. yeah so i think it'll age fine i agree i mean we should watch it in 10 years and see <laughs> <laughs> well uh I had any other closing thoughts to this I will say I don't think this is a super scary movie. So if you're someone who, if you know someone who won't watch it because they're too afraid of being scared, it's not super scary. I slept fine last night. <laughs> yeah, this this is a movie where I was scared while watching it, but as soon as the credits roll, I was fine. Like yes. I definitely had like coming down from my adrenaline high, but yeah, I was I was fine. Yeah, I had no lingering anxiety. So I think that's kind of nice. It's not one where all night I was like holy shit, I don't want to open my laptop. <laughs> you know, it's, it, there aren't lasting effects, which is nice. Yeah. Well, thank you, Orlean, so much for coming on to talk about Host. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to having you on again. Um, would you yeah. mind telling the folks where they could find you? Yeah, thank you. And I'm happy to come back. I I love putting on my like freshman thesis hat with the <laughs> you know domestic violence theme. I love analyzing <laughs> these movies. Uh, so mm-hmm. I'm happy to come back. My podcast is Spooky and Strange, and you can find it wherever you're listening to this. And I would love to hear recommendations for great new weird things to read. Thank you, Orlean, so much for coming on. Uh, If people are interested in listening to her show, I'm going to have links in the show notes right there. So be sure to give her a follow. 
Cool. And I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure you'll come on and we'll talk about um, some great horror books soon. Yes, looking forward to that. Well, thank you again, Orlean. Thank you, everybody, for listening. And be sure to, I don't know, rate, review, subscribe, and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Brooker Horror. And, and don't open up any Zoom portals to hell. No, don't, don't do that. <laughs> well, if you do, just don't invite me to it. All right. <laughs> Bye.